hey there and thank you so much for coming to my channel i really appreciate you finding and uh watching my stuff so let's get started um it's gonna be like my, my first real like 10 plus minute video so settle in grab a drink and let's discuss women's health care um not too long ago probably a week before I'm filming this, I reposted a, uh, a video on my Instagram account. And it was about the importance of providing healthcare coverage for women and women's health. In the United States, most of us get our healthcare coverage from our employer. Um, during this massive health crisis though that we're currently experiencing, over 50, 50, 50 something like that um over 50 million people have been laid off from their jobs because the businesses are closing out of precaution <clears throat> excuse me and i i highly agree with that move because we need to get this thing under control um as somebody who has several other health conditions it's really important that we get this thing in our history and get past it because it puts people like me at greater risk of various health issues. Like I haven't seen my doctors <clears throat> on a regular basis somewhat because of this health crisis that we're in right now. Um, getting back to the point, if you're not employed or uh, you work part time or your employer doesn't provide coverage, um, you're not covered. You can apply for health coverage through programs such as Medicare, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get the coverage and the care that you need in a timely manner. Um, I just wanted to add, side note, if you see me looking down, it's because I have notes on this stuff because I have brain fog and it's a very important topic to get correct, you know. Um, so that's why I'm looking down sometimes. Um, Without coverage, uh, you run the risk of racking up significant health bills. Um, they can be astronomically high, and for some reason here, it's made so that you're supposed to bargain down instead of paying what they say. I'll never understand the process. It, it's lunacy to me. Um, surprisingly large number of people actually declare bankruptcy in the United States each year because of medical bills. It's almost two-thirds of people file bankruptcy because of it. Uh, because healthcare in this country is so expensive and your employer, that insurance doesn't always cover everything that you need despite you paying in on a monthly basis. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A recent article a recent article posted that uh, an insurance company had their most profitable quarter during this health issue that we're all going through. Um, a lot of it is because people delayed going to the doctor, even if they felt sick. It's because of everything that's going on, and so their health premiums help to up the profits of the insurance company. Um, try to wrap your head around that. The United Health, that's the insurance company, reported more than 6.6 .6 billion, billion dollars in profits. Wow, and that was their greatest reported profits ever. Yeah, it seems a little, I don't know what the word is, but uh, Greedy, capitalistic, something, something. That's just me, though. Um, they posted $6.6 .6 billion in profit, while millions of people have filed for unemployment, and they've not been able to pay their rent or mortgage payments because of what's happening in our country. Um, sometimes you also may find yourself working for an employer that does not perfectly align with your personal beliefs. Um, for instance, I don't know if it applies to her, but my cardiologist works at a Catholic hospital, which 
a hospital should provide all the services that men and women need, but if they can file, because they're a religious uh, company, then they can file to be exempt from providing their female employees or their women employees with the health care coverage that they need. Um, yeah. So, under the Affordable Care Act, or the ACA, Obamacare, there are 10 essential benefits that every plan on the marketplace must include. These include ambulatory services, like if you call 911 and you need an ambulance to come get you and bring you to the emergency room. Um, they also cover emergency services, hospitalizations, which includes surgery as well as overnight stays, uh, pregnancy, maternity, and newborn care, mental health and substance use disorders, <clears throat> excuse me, prescription medications, rehab services for both mental and physical conditions, lab services, like if you need to get your blood drawn, um, preventative and wellness services, as well as chronic disease management. I'm very familiar with chronic disease, not so much with the management aspect. Um, they also cover pediatric services. It covers pediatric dentistry as well, but not adult dentistry. I don't know. But uh, also, these plans, in addition to these 10 things that all plans must include and cover, it also includes breastfeeding and birth control. Furthermore, the ACA outlines the type of birth control that needs to be covered when prescribed by a physician. These include the barrier methods, like diaphragms and sponges, hormonal methods, such as the birth control pills that a lot of people are familiar with, as well as like the Nuva Ring, um, implanted devices like the IUD. I have an IUD for several reasons. Um, it's my third one. Emergency contraceptives like the Plan B, sterilization procedures, and patient education and counseling services. However, this is where it gets scary to be a woman. The current administration, there have been several changes that can affect what type of coverage you're able to obtain. In the larger picture, if you work for a religious employer, um, they get to dictate basically what kind of life you're able to achieve. Um, if you happen to enjoy sex and your employer won't cover like birth control and say your partner has latex allergies or something, either you're not able to have sex even though you want to, or you run the risk of unwanted children um, unintended pregnancies, stuff like that. And that can really lead to bigger problems down the line. Um, religious employers can abstain from providing contraceptive methods or counseling through their insurance programs. This will leave some women in a very precarious situation. You can either pay out of pocket, which gets kind of expensive, or you can live with the following, in addition to unintended pregnancies, irregular periods, cramps, PMS, anemia, painful endometriosis symptoms, ovarian cysts, acne, PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, increased risk of both ovarian and endometrial cancers, and you can get pregnant because goddess forbid you enjoy having sex. It's, it's not a bad thing, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't get the can't wrap my head around it because who if like erectile dysfunction tablets are covered and stuff like that you I believe even penis pumps are covered under insurance but you can't get birth control so who are these men with these raging erections supposed to have sex with I are they going to have like 10 children each I don't know um, when I did a quick search uh, on what constitutes a religious employer, it's not as clear-cut as one would imagine. The obvious ones, such as religious schools, have already been brought before the court system because they violated the Workplace Anti-Discrimination Clause. In one case, before the great RBG, which she just 
revealed that the cancer has come back, so let's all hope that she heals quickly. Um, she's still going to stay on our job, which is awesome. Uh, in that case, it was questioned whether religious schools have the right to fire our employees for reasons that have nothing to do with religion. Because I don't think that IUDs or contraceptives are mentioned in the Bible. Because, like, I, I like a lot of books myself, but I don't rule my life by it. I don't know, that's just me. I know a lot of people are probably gonna get mad at that, but that's just my stance. Um, in that case that was brought before OBG, um, it was in regard to a teacher who was fired after revealing that she had breast cancer and required medical leave to undergo chemo chemotherapy treatment. Um, sadly, that teacher has now passed away. Um, also addressed in the case was who as employees fell under the umbrella of, I will dictate your sex life. Um, teachers, nurses, coaches, janitors, and bus drivers. If you're one of those in like a religious school, you may run the risk of experiencing heavy periods, irregular periods, cramping, um, increased risk for cancers, all because your employer says no. I don't want you having protected sex. Um, and the water gets even murkier when you try to figure out what constitutes a religious employer, because like the schools, that's an obvious one, but what else can be considered a religious employer? As of July uh, 8th of 2020, the Trump administration won further control over our bodies. It was determined that quote unquote, employers have that have a sincerely held religious belief or moral obligation against providing insurance coverage or payments for contraceptive services cannot be required to provide such coverage or payments. Yeah. Sincerely held religious beliefs or moral obligations. That seems like very murky. It's very vague but according to npr the purpose of it was to be intentionally vague um it's to the loose definition of it is to allow any company or nonprofit group to exclude the coverage of for contraception if it has a religious or moral obligation so if you say i don't think that you should have sex with anyone then you're basically forcing people not to have sex, not to have access to things that would prevent a lot of different conditions as well as unintended pregnancies. Where's the support going to be when all of that is taken away and women are left with um, ovarian cancer, unintended pregnancies, um, endometriosis symptoms can be debilitating as heck. But hey, yeah, I, I have a moral obligation, you know. Um, knowing this, <clears throat> all of this, what the ACA was supposed to cover um, and how the changes that the Trump administration have tried to implement or did implement, um, I had someone reach out and share with me some wonderful insight into her belief system and how she thinks that she should be able to dictate how strangers, myself and other women out here, uh, they have a say in what we do with our bodies. In return, I may have suggested that she seek out an adult toy so she could release some of her pent up aggression. I guess my message in this video is not only vote, vote, vote because a lot is writing on it. Um, but also that life is short. Um, it's too short to search out hashtags on social media to lash out at strangers um, for having the audacity to advocate for women's health issues. Perhaps that time could have been spent a little bit better and more creative. I don't know, but I appreciate you finding me and watching this whole thing through. Um, 
I figured my first video, I didn't want to do anything mimby pimby. So, uh, yeah, let's just talk about contraception. But I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on that bell because I'm hoping to get at least one video out per week. Uh, maybe some shorter ones here and there. But let me know what you think. And thank you so much. It means a lot that you guys found me and watched all the way.